This is the Gros Michel banana, the banana variety that was most commonly available throughout the US and many other countries up until the 1950s. In the 1950s, a disease known as Panama disease basically wiped out the majority of the Gros Michel crop, and this was replaced by a Panama disease resistant banana, the Cavendish. If you ate a banana anytime basically in the 1960s on, you probably were eating a Cavendish banana. You may have heard that the Cavendish banana is now being threatened by another type of disease. This is a different kind of Panama disease, and there is another uh, thing that affects it called the black Sitatoka fungus. So it's likely that in the future there is going to be a new banana that we eat. There are scientists right now who are working on developing a Cavendish banana that has been altered to be resistant to the various strains of Panama disease and funguses out there. And uh, that is showing progress, so that might be the solution that we're looking for. That means that the bananas we have are basically going to taste very similar to the ones that we have. There are also going to be Cavendish bananas. However, there is another option, and this is a likely option as well, and that is to have a different variety of banana replace the Cavendish. And the one that seems to be the most likely to take the place of the Cavendish if we do end up going that route, and that is the Goldfinger banana. The Goldfinger banana has a similar taste to the Cavendish, however it is resistant to several forms of Panama disease, including the one that is threatening the Cavendish. It is also resistant to the Black Sitatoka fungus, it is also more resistant to pests, to cold, and to wind. So things that the Cavendish banana is susceptible to as far as diseases and just in you know, general problems that they might have are solved with the Goldfinger banana. So it is very likely that the Cavendish will get replaced by the Goldfinger. Well, today, guys, I am going to do something very special. I was given a very rare opportunity to compare all three types of bananas. I am going to try the Gros Michel banana, the Cavendish banana, and the Goldfinger banana in this video and see side by side what they taste like and which one is actually the greatest banana of the three. By the way, I was given this opportunity by Miami Fruit. So Miami Fruit, thank you so much. They sent me a box of these bananas so I could try them side by side. Uh, if you want to try the Goldfinger banana, uh, the Gros Michel banana, they are still available just in very small quantities because they are very vulnerable. Uh, you can actually get them from Miami Fruit. They also have Cavendish bananas, which uh, they grow organic on their farm. So we've got the past, the present, and potentially the future. So what do these taste like? How do they compare? Let's find out. First, I'm going to take a bite of the Cavendish banana. Uh, I know this is not going to be so super exciting because I'm sure you have had one of these as well, but this is just going to be kind of like it's a control group. Tastes all right. Tastes exactly how you think it would. Nice sweetness to it. It's probably like a 6 out of 10 on the sugar scale. No tartness to it, really. It's got like a slight taste of like banana peel or plantain, where it's like a little starchy tasting, maybe. But not like a whole lot. And mostly you're getting what I'm just going to refer to as banana flavor. You know, exactly what you would expect a banana to taste like. This has it like a whole bunch. So next I'm going to try the Goldfinger. The Goldfinger already, it looks a little bit different. It's got a slight yellow color to it and the Cavendish is very white. Well, let me give it a smell test, why not? It smells like a banana. Oh, this smells different. Like a little tart smelling, like almost like a little citrusy. Not by much, but like a, it's got like a little, little sharpness to it, a little brightness. Okay. Hmm. Different. Very different. 
The texture is uh, much softer. This is riper than the, uh, the Cavendish that I'm eating. So that would make it maybe a little softer. But you know, I've had riper <laughs> Cavendish bananas. I've had Cavendish bananas at this level and they are a little bit more firm than this. This one kind of like melts apart. The sweetness on this is about the same. Of course, this is something that can vary, you know, fruit to fruit, plant to plant, what have you, when it's grown and all that, but so it would be like anything I'm, I'm saying here. But for the ones that I have here, about the same on sweetness. It um, has a very unique flavor though. The flavor is markedly different. It's um, got a little bit of a berry kind of flavor. It tastes like if you took one of these, one of these Cavendish bananas, and you blended it with like one tart strawberry. It's got like a little bit of sourness to it, not a lot. I'd say probably like a two out of 10 on my lemon scale. This one, however, has a zero. So they do taste very similar, but this has more complexity to it, more flavor to it. And it's like all around, um, I think a better banana. The Cavendish has been referred to as a junk banana. Uh, the Goldfinger, I do not think, deserves that uh, classification. This is not junk. This one does taste very good. It's not the best banana that I've had, but it is certainly an improvement to the Cavendish. You know, like sometimes companies will change the secret recipe and everybody freaks out even if the secret recipe is improved. You get used to things tasting a certain way. And I think that would be a big reason why you know the banana companies don't want to use a different banana they want to have the same banana that is just going to be resistant to all of the things that are currently affecting it so uh, i can see that business decision but taking things just like on the surface level and comparing them side by side these are very different the gold finger is very different but i think on just about all accounts it is better the only negative I've heard about the Goldfinger is that it, take, it takes longer for it to grow. So the Cavendish is going to be a faster thing, so that's going to be desirable by you know, the banana companies, but the Goldfinger, it does definitely taste better. I think most people would probably agree with me on that. Finally, I have one more banana, and that is the Grow Michelle. The Gros Michel tastes quite similar to the Cavendish. But you know how I said the Cavendish had like a little bit of a, like a plantain kind of taste, like a little, little bonus flavor in there that's not so pleasant? The Gros Michel is much cleaner tasting. Uh, it's got the, that same kind of like banana flavor, but without any of the bonuses. No bonus flavors in there, no roughness to it. And that flavor that it does have is dialed up. Some people say that banana flavoring, like banana candy, that taste is not based off the Cavendish, it's based off the Gros Michel. So Gros Michel, by logic, tastes just like uh, artificial banana flavoring or banana candy. That is not true, <laughs> okay? Uh, this does not taste like artificial banana flavoring. Artificial banana flavoring tastes like chemicals and garbage. This actually tastes really good. It does have a um, a bit maybe like a banana candy-ish kind of flavor just because it is very flavorful. However, it is not. It does not taste like chemicals. Okay, it does not taste like chemicals the way that banana candies do. Gros Michel tastes very similar to the Cavendish, and it's just like if you took everything you like about a Cavendish banana and just made it better. That's, that's the Gros Michel. So we took a big step down to get our Cavendish. In the 1950s, I can see the Cavendish showing up on supermarket shelves and people eating it and not really noticing that it's any different than the Gros Michel. It's not as good. Like having them side by side, it is definitely not as good. Gros Michel is better but they are similar enough where I think people will just be like, huh, well, yeah, it's not, a, not a, such a good one, but it, it doesn't taste like a, a very different fruit. However, if the Goldfinger does become the banana of the future, if this does take over uh, 
that's going to be a shock to people. It is definitely different than these two. That shock may be a negative, just even though, like, objectively, the Cavendish is not so good, it is a big change. So people might resist that. They might have a problem with the Goldfinger just being as different as it is. Getting to try these bananas side by side is a very rare and special opportunity, and uh, I'm really glad to have gotten the chance to do this and see how the bananas have changed and progressed and potentially will continue to progress forward into the future. And if you would like to try these yourself, if you want to try the Gros Michel and the Goldfinger and compare them to the Cavendish, see where we have come from and where we potentially are going, uh, check out Miami Fruit's website. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to try this yourself, they have them available. Otherwise, guys, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, you may want to check out the video that is below me right now. That should be good, too. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, it is a huge help to my channel, so please do consider subscribing or clicking that bell. That does something, too. Not sure what it is. Also, check out the description below. There's all sorts of other things I have going on. I don't even know anymore. But, guys, I will see you next time. Take care.